Ow. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, before we start, let's just go to a word of prayer, and then we can, uh, we can begin. So let's, let's pray. Uh, God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for uh, your mercy, God. And I just thank you that we're able to come together and worship you. I pray, Father, that you'll speak through your word today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll bring conviction, you'll guide us into truth. And that, God, that's out of my brokenness and just fully relying on you. God, I pray we have an experience with you in our minds and in our hearts. And God, I just pray that we leave this place changed, transformed. And God, we lift everything to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Merry Christmas, everyone. I, I, I love Christmas. This is like my favorite time of year. Uh, I, I love everything about the season. Like, I love the lights. I love the music. Every time I go to a grocery store and they're playing some Christmas song, like even by Mariah Carey or something, I'm just like, I get into it. And Christmas is a time where I, I love to eat cookies and stuff. So I've been saving, like, these shortbread cookies. And I usually get them from Costco, but... They, they're not there lately. So I, I, I was kind of mad about it because I went there and I didn't see it. So I'm hoping it's there this week because it's already, already Christmas. So I, I love everything. I love the parties. I love just hanging out with family. But most of all, I love, I love presents. I love presents. So if that's a hint to you guys, I, I love it. Like w when I was a kid, we would have, we would have big parties. Um, big parties with, with family and friends, and we would open presents at 12 a.m., like Christmas Eve. Um, I, don't, I wasn't really into the whole, well, my family wasn't into the whole Christmas day thing. We, we, we literally, like, opened presents, all of it, in, on, at 12. When, when it hits 12, we're like, yeah! And I'd have, like, this pile of presents you know, as a kid, and I'm like, wow! I remember my dad, he bought me a Sega Saturn. Does anyone remember Sega? Just, maybe just some of us. But it, it was amazing, I was like, yes! And I, I opened it, I was like so happy. But you know, as I grew older, for some reason, all the presents st stopped coming. Like, it, it, it felt like my pile of presents just got less and less. And I'm like, what the heck? What's going on? Like, just because I'm older doesn't mean I don't love presents. There's this one Christmas where we're opening presents and, you know, we'd have like this, this every, all, everyone from our family would bring all the, this huge pile of presents and for some reason, everyone's name was being called except mine. So I'm like, what the heck? What's going on? And I was in college at this time, and, you know, and this, all this anticipation. And the presents got less and less. It was under the tree, and finally, David, here's your present. I'm like, oh, yes, finally. And I got it, and it was this small box. This, it's like, kind of like just a small rectangular box. And I'm thinking, oh, this is a watch. Uh, maybe a bracelet. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I could wear bracelets. Um, and I'm like, all right. And I open it, and it's a pen. And I'm like, huh, a pen? A pen? For Christmas? And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, all right. I guess I'm in college. I can write things. And I'm like, waiting. There's got to be more. There's got to be more, you know, at least socks. Like, I, I usually get socks at, at least. But that Christmas, I only got a pen. There wasn't anything left for me. And I didn't get it. Where this pen is now, I don't know. I have no idea. You know, one interesting thing I've realized about Christmas presents 
One thing I've realized, even with just like any material good, they always seem to have an expiry date on happiness. Like when you first get that gift, you're like, oh yeah, you're so excited. You open it, it's like awesome. But then next month or next week, you could feel it slowly losing its luster, losing its shine, till all of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore. And the next year you're hoping to replace it with something new or with the next best thing. And the cycle begins all over again. So my big question today is this, like, can we find a source of happiness that lasts longer than Christmas presents? That lasts longer than the material goods that we get? So we want to open your Bibles, if you do not have your Bibles, it'll be up on the screen so you can read with me. Our passage today comes in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20, and let's read it. Let's read it together. It says this in verse 8, and then there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Where the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned. <laughs> the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. You know, the first key from our Bible passage today is that we need to hear clearly what God has to say. To hear clearly what God has to say. So recently, I, I had an ultrasound. I wasn't pregnant, but I had an ultrasound. And it was for my bladder and kidney. And if you've, has anyone had an ultrasound for their bladder? All right, me and Matt, congrats to us. OK, so if you have an ultrasound for your bladder or kidney, the prerequisites for this type of test is very strenuous, OK? Like before the exam, you have to drink one liter of water. So you have to drink one liter of water. But here's the thing, you cannot pee, OK? So you drink water, one liter, and for that hour, you cannot pee. You have to hold it. Your bladder has to be full for that exam. So I'm like, okay, it's not very hard to drink a liter of water. Okay? So I'm like, I drink this water and I can't pee. I'm like, oh, I feel okay. So I get into my car and I'm driving and I'm listening to music and stuff. Oh, man. Oh, I start to sweat. Oh, man, I, I, I have to pee. I have to, really, I have to really go. But you can't. So I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so I, I'm driving. So I'm sitting in the waiting room and I'm so uncomfortable. And I'm rocking. Oh gosh, ooh, man. I, I, have to, I have to really pee. And it, it's 
it's, it was weird. Like, I, I did feel kind of, I felt kind of pregnant. Like, I was taking like small breaths and I was walking back and forth and I'm just waiting. And finally, the ultrasound guy comes and says, like, AK, oh man. And I couldn't walk. When I got up from my seat, I couldn't walk straight. Like, it hurt. I was like, I was crunched like this. Like, oh, okay, I'm, co I'm coming. And I get there. And I lie down. And the first thing, you know, he, you know, they, they squirt you with the arm in this thing. Ultrasound, whatever it's called, the first thing they do is they they press on your pelvis. And it's like, whoop, 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 whoop. And they're like, oh my gosh! And they press, and he's like, yeah, it's a chip, click, click, click. He's just taking pictures, and we're like, oh, oh, oh my gosh! And he's just like, oh, your bladder is full. I'm like, hi, I don't have time for this small top. And I'm like, oh, hurry up! And he's like, oh, wait, and he's like, oh, wait, and he keeps looking. It takes lots of pictures. Well, push it on my pelvis. Is it just hang in there? You're trying to encourage me? Just hang in there. We're almost done. He finally stops. He finally stops. And he looks at me. And he says, David, it's done. You can pee now. I cannot. Oh my gosh. This euphoria of joy like rushed through my body. And it was like the greatest words that I ever heard. I was like, oh, and I, I jumped. I honestly jumped and I ran to the washroom and it was, yeah, it was the, the best thing ever. It was the best. You know, the shepherds experienced something similar. Maybe not an ultrasound, but they're working and they're watching sheep. It's a very boring job. Nothing exciting happens. And then all of a sudden, bam! A supernatural legion of angels appear. The shepherds are terrified. They're terrified as they should be. You know, just imagine working your most bo like the boringest job you've ever worked. The most boring job ever. You know, I, I used to work at the Flyer Force. And what we did at the Flyer Force is we just loaded buses with flyers. That's all we did. And it was so boring, you'd get lots of paper cuts. That was the worst. But it was a very boring job. But can you imagine, you're just loading buses and then on a boring day, all of a sudden, bam! This legion of angels appear, they're flying everywhere. It would be a scary sight. It'd be scary! Ah, what, what's going on? So I get the reaction of the shepherds. But then the angels speak, and their words fill the shepherds with joy. That initial fear disappears. All of a sudden, this great joy settles in. Something great is about to happen. Now, similarly, like many of us, you know, we're just living life, doing our own thing. You know, we don't really think of God. You know, the Bible explains that there is always a part of us that doesn't trust or want God. But then, bam! You know, for me, you know, we had the baptisms, you know, there's people's stories. All of a sudden, bam, we have like this experience with God, and it hits us. It hits us, and it can be scary. So what does this mean? You know, perhaps you were a skeptic before and you hear the Bible. You hear the Bible with suspicion at first. But then you get an inkling. You get an inkling that if Christianity is true, man, it's going to interrupt my life. Even among the most committed Christians, we have this feeling, oh, 
ah, the struggle that God might interrupt a good thing going on in our lives. So I think Christian or not, we all respond to God's word with initial fear, suspicion. Uh, on Instagram, I, I follow uh, this account. Uh, it's called the Good News Movement. And it's good because it just all it has is good news. And they had this story where this boy who is deaf gets a hearing aid for the first time. He gets his hearing aid uh, to help him hear. And it's interesting, if you watch this video, Initially, the kid is, is scared. He's suspicious. He's like, Whoa, what, are, what are these new sounds? But then he realizes. He realizes and understands that he's hearing his parents' voice for the first time. And that fear all of a sudden goes away. And it turns it... You should watch it. He turns it. He's like, he, his, he, he gets this big smile on his face. He's like, hoo, 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 hoo. Like, it just changes. You're like, whoa. This big smile appears and he's so joyful and it's so heartwarming watching this. This is the same for us that when we truly hear, When we understand God's words and what it truly means for us, and we realize that God's words actually bring us to life, fear will turn into joy. You know, John chapter 6, verse 63, it says, Jesus said to his disciples that the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. You know, many of us, you know, when we initially hear like a Bible passage, we're like, ugh, there's that wrestling. We're like, well, I don't like that. I don't like how that sounds. Oh, there's a tension, a tension that you feel. You know, I, I'd encourage you to just keep listening, keep studying, keep wrestling with it. Because when we truly understand God's word, we will know and realize that Jesus is the greatest gift for us. He is truly life-giving. That what he did on the cross and what he's going to do when he renews creation, renews everything, oh, it will be joyful. It will be life-giving. When you start grasping that joy and it starts to permeate, your heart, that's when you know you're starting to truly understand. And just like the shepherds, you'll find out that you can't just hear it. You can't just hear it and do nothing. God's words are meant to change how we live. It's meant for us to share, which brings to my second point. That our greatest, our second key to greater happiness is that we have to do something about God's words. We got to do something. You know, when Shala told me she was pregnant, I was excited. I wasn't like, ah, oh, already? Like, I, I was excited. Like, oh, I've always wanted to be a dad. Always. I, I've, I've dreamt about it. I've, you know, I've always, I've always had that plan. That, oh, I want to be a dad one day. So I was excited. And when I heard the news, all I wanted to do was tell people. I wanted to tell my parents. I wanted to make a Facebook status and tell the whole world. I wanted everyone to share in my joy. I wanted to tell everyone. You know, I, I, I asked my brother, oh, can we do a creative way of announcing it on Instagram? So my brother, we designed something. We designed this ultrasound picture if we could, yeah, it's like, this is a picture. I, 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 I put it up, and I'm like, ah, we're pregnant. And, you know, and it was funny, because like some people were like, whoa, is that real? And, but someone wrote, ew, in the comments. I'm like, ew, that, that's my face. 
That kind of hurt. But I, we, we made all these things, and I even made fake names for my kids. Um, I'd be like, yeah, when Jalen was in the womb, I'd be like, yeah, Dalvir, Dalvir is coming. And then uh, for Isaiah, we used a fake name. We, we kept calling him Millhouse the whole time. Uh, if you want to show the graphic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> or not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I announced it. I'm like, oh, any guesses for Millhouse? And like, people were like, you know, one day my mom texted me and she's like, Millhouse, question mark? Please don't do this to me. <laughs> and I, I was laughing at her. But I was just excited. Like, I couldn't stand still. Like, there was a part of me that I was just too excited. Like, I love going to the store, shopping for baby clothes. Uh, we went to classes, you know, birth classes. I loved going to it. I, I don't know why. I was just so excited. There was something about it that I just couldn't stand still. I couldn't just sit there, like I had to do something. So when the shepherds heard the news from the angels, they, they didn't just stand there and smile. You know when you hear good news, you're like, hmm, that's great. They didn't just stand there and smiled. The news was too good. The news was too good that they had to go see the child. That they had to go, that they wanted to see Jesus. You know, in verse 15, it says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. The shepherds knew. They knew that they had to do something. They had to respond to this, even if it meant doing something inconvenient. Like, you know, they're, they're taking care of sheep. They'd have to walk in the dark night, leave the sheep behind, perhaps risk looking like fools if this wasn't true. But they did it anyways because they knew that it would be worth it. They got to see Jesus with their own eyes. They got to encourage Mary and Joseph. But most of all, they couldn't help but tell people about it. You know, they had to tell the whole town. They weren't just being blessed by it, but they want it to be a blessing. It's kind of like when you eat at your favorite restaurant. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you're like, oh, this is good. This is great. But you can't help but tell people about it. Yo, you should check out this restaurant. It's the best meat. Barbecue, mm, good. It's like the same, if your favorite TV show, you're like, oh yeah, best TV show. You tell people about it. Why? So that they can enjoy it too. So that they can enjoy it too. Be blessed by it as well. And that's, if that's how we talk about trivial things, if that's how we talk about trivial things like restaurants, TV shows, then how much more? How much more the Christmas story, which it has something amazing to tell, that there is a God, there is a God that loves you, that broke into human history, sent his son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We have to feel that. We have to let that permeate our hearts. We need to let that good news move our hearts again because for many of us, we have forgotten the joy of this message. It has become redundant. We have become indifferent to the Christmas story. If we're honest, presents make us more excited. Shopping. The family parties make us more excited. It's hard. You know, I, I often catch myself. I'm like, yeah, parties. Oh, the Jesus, yeah. That part. 
We have to recapture that, that urgency of God's mission. It joined him in his work to save the world. And once we feel it for ourselves, once we feel it, we can help other people feel it too. You know, many of our friends and family are indifferent to the Christmas story. Some dismiss it as just myth, skeptical about it. So we need to be able to talk about it, win them over in a winsome way. Give them a reason as to why this matters. Especially with our daily lives, we need to work to win minds. You know, if you read the Bible closely, I really believe that our faith is rooted in firm evidence. I really do. Eyewitness accounts, an empty tomb. Like there's so many ways we could figure out if this is reasonable intellectually. You know, I, I really believe that God never asked us to believe this blindly. You know, the shepherds have to see it for themselves. I really believe that there's good historical evidence, philosophical evidence for believing in Christianity, but we have to learn it. We have to engage it. We have to feel it for ourselves. We need to listen well to people's questions. We need to listen well to people's doubts and objections. And we need to find ways to communicate complex truths in a way that people understand. We need to have give people something to think about. But sometimes it's not about just winning minds, but for some people it's like winning their hearts. You know, some people don't necessarily want an argument, they just want to be loved and heard. They want genuine relationship. They don't want to be treated like projects. They want to see a life worth living. Does our Christian life show a better way to live? Does your Christian life show a better way to live? Some of us have given up on friends. You know, we've given up on family. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, I tried. It's just not working. It's not happening. But I still believe we have to try. You know, I, I got a letter in the mail the other day, and it was just addressed to the person living at my address. And then I'm like, oh, my, well, how did they know? Okay. So I opened it, and it was a handwritten letter to my home. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know this person. And then I started reading it and stuff, and uh, yeah, that's interesting. And it was from a Jehovah's Witness. And I was like, oh, okay. And you know, honestly, I, I didn't agree with anything they said. However, however, I appreciated that they tried. You know, I appreciated they took the time to write me a letter with their own hand. And I was looking, is this typed? And I was like looking at it and stuff, but it was actually you know, a nice handwritten letter to me that they took the time to at least try. Some of us don't try. We don't even try. We don't even try to think of ways of how we can try. But we need to make an earnest effort. Like, if you believe this is true, if you believe this is really joyful, if this would really impact people's lives, wouldn't we at least try? We have to make an earnest effort to win their minds with reason and yet win their hearts by showing that you care, showing them a better life. The Christmas story, it's too good. It's so good that it demands a response. And if we respond well, then we will experience that same joy that the shepherds had that they felt on the first Christmas. Because Christmas, it can provide good moments. It can provide great moments of like getting good gifts and hanging out with family, hanging out with loved ones. But there's something even greater than that. It's found in the Christmas story. It's found in God's words to us where he tells us that God has come. Jesus is here. He's coming to rescue us because he loves us. And like the shepherds, I know that there is this initial fear for what this means for our lives. But when we truly understand God's words 
and what it means for us, we will see that Jesus is truly the best gift. He is the lasting gift. He's the one that lasts. He's the one that doesn't go away. And when we truly understand what happened on this first Christmas, we cannot help but respond. We can't help but do something to tell someone so that they too can experience the same joy that we are experiencing. But for some of us today, we have forgotten. We have become indifferent to the Jesus, to Jesus, to the Jesus, to Jesus and the Christmas story. We need to recapture that joy again. Let it permeate our hearts. Let it permeate our minds so that we can truly show people what it truly means to live. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word today. For some of us, it is a great reminder of this story. I pray for all of us, even including myself. Because I feel sometimes we, we tend to forget the gravity of this message. Many of us have become indifferent to it. And if we're honest... All the Christmas things like presents, family parties, they've become more exciting. We're more excited about that than this. Oh, God, I pray that you recapture our hearts again. Recapture our hearts that it starts permeating our lives again. That, God, there is something joyful here. That all these gifts, material goods that we have, they all have expiry dates on happiness. But Father, you are, you have given us a gift that lasts, that will never go away, a gift that is greater. I pray, Father, that we will recapture that again, recapture that joy so that we can tell other people. Because some of us, we've kind of given up on friends, we've given up on family members, God. Holy Spirit, convict us, give us names in our minds today of people that we've, you know, given up on. I pray, Father, that we recapture that energy again to talk about this message, to, to share it, to win minds, but also win hearts. Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Holy Spirit, continue to move in our hearts. Convict us. In your name we pray. Amen.